Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got our TCB dump update today from tcbdump.org. So if you're relying on that, you can now download TCB dump 4.9 and be no longer vulnerable against these various heap buffer overflows that were released earlier this week. But to make up for it, we got a new survey and that one hits Windows users, Windows 2012 and later on the server side and Windows 8 and later on the client side started implementing SMB version 3 and there is a relatively straightforward buffer overflow in SMB version 3 on these Windows systems that it can be exploited now thanks to a proof of concept exploit. Now this is at this point just a denial of service vulnerability. It's not clear if it's also executable. In order to be vulnerable or to be exploited a client needs to connect to a malicious SMB version 3 server. So the way this could potentially be executed is that you visit a website that includes a link that links, for example, an image uh, to an SMB version 3 server. I tested this particular scenario with a static HTML file on the client and yes, the client uh, rebooted immediately after opening the file. If you get hit by it, you'll see a blue screen of death. I have a screenshot of the blue screen in the diary, so you can compare in case you see one pop up on your system. But there's also a very experimental preliminary snort signature that I came up with for it. Not sure how good it is, but you could also try that out if you would like to detect exploit attempts. At this point, I haven't seen a statement from Microsoft about this exploit yet, so in case you run across something, uh, let me know. And if you didn't update to WordPress 4.7.2, which was released end of January, because you thought, well, uh, there wasn't really a big security vulnerability that's being addressed with this update, well, uh, you were wrong. There is a pretty serious privilege escalation vulnerability that's being addressed with this update. Version 4.7 and 4.7.1 are affected by this vulnerability. They just uh, never really mentioned in the update notes that uh, this update does fix this vulnerability. It's a vulnerability in the REST API and any user with credentials for your site can get admin rights and with that of course uh, deface or post arbitrary content on the site. And just to remind us why it's sometimes a judgment call when to update or not to update, Webroot apparently had issues with an update released yesterday. It did cause a blue screen of death on systems that were rebooted after the update. There are reports, for example, from Windows 2008 R2. Haven't really seen other operating systems uh, being affected yet, but well, you know, one of those uh, typical false positives maybe that we often run into with antivirus software. The problem has been fixed by now, so if you update it after this particular update 901543 came out, then you should be fine. And Google is making it easier for its customers uh, to use two-factor authentication. If you signed up for Google's G Suite, which used to be known as Google Apps, it's essentially when you as a company sort of sign up to use Gmail and other Google applications for business purposes, you now have the option to require that all of your users are taking advantage of two-factor authentication doesn't have to be the Google Authenticator. You can also now require the use of physical security keys and Google, of course, does support the U2F or FIDO Alliance keys that you often see now these days in order to have a separate physical authenticator, not just a software application. And Cisco fixed a critical vulnerability in its Prime Home system. This vulnerability does allow an authentication bypass, so anybody could remote control one of these systems. Now, this is nothing that usually the end user will update, but uh, these products are deployed by ISPs and such, so as a result, they will have to apply the patch to systems they have this deployed with end users. 
Cisco Prime Home is based on the TR69 protocol. This is the protocol, well, a cousin of which uh, caused all the problems with uh, the routers of Deutsche Telekom. So maybe they looked a little bit closer in how this particular protocol is implemented on Cisco equipment and found some vulnerabilities there that they are now patching. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.